since 2003. This is the Sports Source. East Tennessee's number one sports talk show. Presented by Hype Wrench and by Junk Be Gone and by the Garza Law Firm. With your host, John Pennington. The Sports Source starts now. Good Sunday morning. Welcome into the Junk Beyond Studios for today's edition of the Sports Source. We appreciate you being with us. Before I tell you what's coming up, let me just say this. I usually say this at the end of the show, but thank you because, you know, we're still, this is our 20th year of doing this, and that's not possible if not for you watching this show week in, week out, and being loyal to our sponsors. You, it's amazing how our sponsors tell me that people just knock their doors off because of you. And I thank you for doing this, and I also thank them, and I hope you'll get out and see them even more often, because 90 minutes a week, year-round, uh, there's never been anything like this in Tennessee television. So that's all you and the sponsors. Thank you. Thank them. Today's show, here's what the sponsors are bringing you today. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, football, baseball, softball, New entertainment complex that they're looking at building over there next to Neyland Stadium. Ticket prices on and on and on. Realignment, that's back in the news this week. Talk about all that. So let's get into it. First segment of today's program brought to you by one of those really good sponsors I was telling you about, Junk Be Gone. How is your backyard, folks? Is it up to snuff for the summer? Do you have an old grill that needs to go? A shed that is an eyesore? A rusted swing set from when your 30-year-old kids were little. Junk Be Gone can haul all that stuff off. And if it's big enough, they'll just take it apart for you. If it's too big for you to get rid of it, have them come out there. They'll take it apart and haul it off. Junk Be Gone, I absolutely love this company. I use them myself. Junkbegone.biz to learn more. All right. Here's another reason the show's been on for 20 years. My guests. Right over here, longtime sports writer Jimmy Himes. Jimmy, thanks. Longtime sports writer, longtime radio host, longtime everything. Jimmy Himes. Just an old guy. You're just a long time, man. <laughs> Speaking of rusty. And then right here from 991 The Sports Animal, we have Josh Ward. Josh, thanks for being here. Thank you. Right over here, longtime sports writer, longtime radio, longtime TV. And I just need to put longtime media guy, Bob Hodge. Thanks Come for being on, here. Jimmy. Old. Just old. Long time. Just old. All rusty. right. Very good. Hey, uh, Tennessee announced this week, and I will go ahead and show you pictures of this thing. University announced this week that it's looking into a combination public money, private money funded entertainment district, the Neyland Entertainment District, to fit between Neyland Stadium and the waterfront. It kind of stretches all the way down behind Thompson Bowling Arena there, as you can see. Uh, there would be a hotel on one end. They'd already talked about that. We'd mentioned that on the show, and you see where the placement is there in that orange box that says hotel site. Um, they already are talking about restaurants, bars, additional tailgating, retail, family-friendly activities in this spot. Looks really good. This is becoming, and we can take a look here. They've got a couple of pictures there at the top that they put out in their, their release. But it's becoming standard fare for a lot of pro stadiums. And other colleges are getting in on this, but UT's kind of at the forefront for the colleges. You can see there the Cubs and the Braves versions of this up at the top. Uh, there's a big one out in L.A. next to the Staples Center. Uh, they've got them in Milwaukee that's famous. Uh, Kansas City has one. And at the bottom, you see the views from the hotel space there at the Rogers Center in Toronto, where you can watch a Blue Jays game. Um, Randy Boyd, UT president, had this to say. Uh, this public-private partnership opportunity will enhance the look and atmosphere of Neyland Stadium and the Knoxville campus while creating an additional destination for the city of Knoxville, all without state funding. And then Athletic Director Danny White said, Innovation is at the forefront of everything we do. The ideation of this new Neyland Entertainment District exemplifies that mindset. This is a massive project that has the potential to positively impact our entire city. We're eager to see what world-class developers dream up to creatively maximize this extraordinary market opportunity, we have the capacity for constructing an entertainment ecosystem that doesn't presently exist anywhere across the collegiate landscape. Pretty impressive stuff. I will continue to say that uh, they hit a home run when they landed Danny White. And, you know, for all I know, you got Randy Boyd, who's involved in another Knoxville Stadium project right now. He might have been involved in this as well. I'm sure. Whose idea this was, not sure. But kudos to Dondi Plowman. Randy Boyd, Danny White, from my perspective, just for thinking outside the box. So I like that. Now, that's the outside the box. I like outside thinking. 
But Bob, going you're going back inside the box. Let's go inside the box. You are the fuddiest of duddies. Uh, you don't like change. I usually don't like change. What do you think about this? As a season ticket goer over there, what do you think about uh, having an extra entertainment zone? To to paraphrase John Kerry, I was against it before I was for it. When they originally came out, no, 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 stop. Oh, it's Please, just hotel just stuff. Leave okay. things alone. But the more I think about it, the more that this seems like something that does take you forward into a place where, where sports is going. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at the new stadiums that have been built. You know, I still think of the Titan Stadium as a new stadium. Yeah. And it, it's getting ready to, yeah. to be the old torn down stadium. So I just thought, you know what? I still like Nayland Stadium when it had an open end and you could stand up on the hill and look yeah. down and watch ball games. I think it's a good idea. The part that caught me was in Danny White's statement when he, when he talked about this makes another destination for Knoxville. This makes something where people will go, something to do. It'll bring more people down into the downtown area, not downtown specifically, right. but the downtown area. So, yeah, it makes sense the direction we're going. I, I, I have a lot of questions. Parking, which... You were, people were laughing okay. at earlier, but yeah, I worry about parking, tailgating, all these things. But I think it is a good idea. I think it is a good outside the box idea. I will be dragged reluctantly in okay. that direction. All right. Gentlemen, thoughts, likes, dislikes, or any drawback to this? Well, I, I like that it is making Knoxville and the UT downtown area destination more than just seven or eight Saturdays. Yeah. The fall. And it, uh, in the release, they referenced Thompson Bowling Arena. You have G10, that spot in between the football and basketball stadium. But you know, football only represents a small part of the year. So you're creating mm -hmm. more entertainment, which will result in more uh, dollars for the university and for Knoxville. If you grow that out long term, there will be costs going into it. And there's a lot of time that we'll have to go into this. But I think this is thinking outside of just football, using football as the center, basketball as a bit of, the, of a connecting point with it as well. I have an ideation. Yeah. Yeah. I love that word. I got hung on it. It's like, I don't yeah. use that. Yeah. I think it's a good idea. Uh, and, and as Josh said, it's not just for the seven or eight home games that yeah. you might play. I do think that a part of it is if you want to attract people to come to your stadium, you, you've got to entertain them. Yes. Winning is good, but it's not always enough. Now, the way Tennessee's winning, it looks pretty good, right? Yeah. If you're scoring 46 points a game. But I think that you've got to you've got to make people want to come watch your pro, watch your team and have a good time, Vol Village and those type of things. I think this lends to that. Yeah. Uh, my my potential concern is parking. Yeah. It's also expenses. How much is this going to cost? I've seen some numbers are pretty high, but I do like the idea. I like the concept. Um, I like it. Just to take the sports out of it. You go to most cities that have a waterfront that is as long as there Knoxville. You go. They will have used it. They will have. Yes. Kudos to Mike Chase, who years ago said, "Hey, let's do this," because Calhoun's is an institution. But there should be more on Knoxville's waterfront than just yeah. Calhoun's, and to have something down there along the water. And while it's not on the waterfront, it's overlooking the waterfront. Yes, I think that is a huge step in the right direction. I've always wondered this city just has not taken advantage of it. I, I know that different people own different parts of it. Yada yada yada. This is a city that has wasted a waterfront. Far too long. And, so I'm and, good for it just for that sense. That was another thing that drew me into it was because I thought when you go to other cities that have a river running through it and what they've done around that, I think Chattanooga yes. is a fantastic example yeah. of that and how Knoxville has sort of been behind and all these things. Yeah, this adds to that and should be able. And here's something else. I think it kind of ties the campus maybe to downtown a little bit more because you go downtown, there's restaurants and everything yeah. up at Market Square the old city, well now you got this down here, so does that just increase the flow of people going to different places in Knoxville? Well, and they've killed, you know, this is one where I'll be a fuddy-duddy. They've killed the strip, exactly. as I knew it. It's gone, I, I just saw that, I didn't realize Stefano's Pizza was like the last vestige of the, the old south down there, gone. Uh, the night they drove old Stefano's <laughs> down, gone. Uh, so my my years on campus, it's just unrecognized. It's just a canyon of apartments and crap, in my view. Uh, so if you can take some of those restaurants and things and put them over there, I think that there's also, this is a silly thing, we're getting off on a tangent here, but uh, college kids having to go to Market Square for their bars, and the, which college kids do, 
That involves driving. Yeah. Probably smarter to have some bars over there on campus and kind of an area. The other thing this does is when you look at Tennessee baseball last year where you had these capacity crowds, it's like we need a place where we can bring a TV out here and have fans watch. Now you've got it. And you see this. These facilities are what these, you know, the Milwaukee Bucks, when they're playing a road game and the, you've got a billion people, what do they call it, the Deer Zone or it's... it's Deer Park. Deer, Deer Park, Park, that's it. Mm -hmm. And the, the Chiefs have one of these too where... When they're on the road, you'll see all these Chiefs fans gather and watch games there. And this, that's something that you can right. add here with this, this kind of spacing. I love it. Yeah, I and, to, and I said it, it, football is kind of a connection. If we bring it back to the football side or basketball or whatever, we, yeah, Tennessee whatever. Athletics, you are, you are growing what Tennessee is, which is still a recruiting pitch. Yes. The gap yeah. between what is pro sports and what is college sports is closing. So if you make it look more like a pro sport destination – then that will be attractive to recruit. So if you're just wondering about how does this affect our sports teams, there can be a sports impact as well. It's a good tease for what we're going to be talking about next. We'll turn this around. But let me tell you what's coming up on the show the rest of the way. Could it be two World Series for Tennessee, softball and baseball this year? We'll talk about that. Tennessee has landed an unbelievable freak athlete. It's the only way to describe this guy. We'll break down whether Emmanuel Okoye uh, should be starting on defense or offense when he gets to campus. Uh, what if... Oklahoma called Josh Heupel. What would he do? A national publication asked that question this week. We'll answer it for him. Josh Heupel's rank in the SEC. We'll talk about that. Seven ACC schools are eyeing the exit over there. We'll discuss that as well. But coming up next on the Sports Source, can you still afford to go to football games? Jimmy mentioned that you need a reason to bring people to campus. Well, whether it's UT or road games or pro football games, can you still afford football tickets if you're an average fan? We'll show you Tennessee schedule. Buy ticket price next. Come on back on the Sports Source.